This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What is going on, my reefing fam? March here. This is Fragbox TV, and today's video is going to be on one of my probably favorite soft corals of all time, the Florida Recordia. These beautiful ones you see right here. Before we jump into it, I just want to give you some quick facts. These are super easy to keep, super low light. They're a little bit aggressive towards other corals, but not towards each other. As you can see, we have a couple hundred of them here, side by side, all up in this basket with no issues at all. Orange, we get a lot of these ones. So where do we get them? This is one coral that's pretty cool because it comes from the Caribbean. Most of the other corals we have here in the shop are from Australia, Indonesia, some from Vietnam, Malaysia, different countries but uh, usually out east in the world. These actually come not too, from, not too far away. And our resident clownfish here in the store has decided that he is now gonna host all of our flower pots. Okay, that's cool. You do your thing. So it's a soft coral, no skeleton. That means it can grow relatively quick. It doesn't have to calcify. And it's a little bit similar to Yuma. So let me show you Yuma because they often get confused with one another. There is a Yuma. So, the trained eye can usually ID them pretty quickly. I, it's not really scientific, but I like to think of the Yuma as more bubbly, and the way that the, the kind of vesicles radiate outwards is pretty distinct on a Yuma versus a Recordia. What we have here is a Rhodactus mushroom, so you wouldn't really confuse a Recordia with one of these. And then over here, these are Discosoma. Again, Discosoma, we just call these Discos. Another type of mushroom, but you wouldn't really, you wouldn't confuse these with Cordia because they're missing a lot. They don't look anything like these. Now these corals are amazing because they come in so many different color varieties. Their bodies, mouth, skirts, and their inner lines it all can be a different combination of almost any color. Pinks and blues, some of the most rare. I think blues. We don't have a lot of blue ones in here, so a true blue Recordia. If you ever see one, gobble that one, grab it right away because. You're not gonna find one. Um, look, look how many there are here, and I'm, I'm struggling to find one. I see hues of blue, but once in a while we'll get one that is just completely blue. Easily see why they're highly sought after. They're just they're really striking. They get about the size of golf balls, and they're really easy to grow. Let me find one that's splitting. Oh, you see right there? He's formed a second mouth. Right in the middle of their body is a mouth, and you can feed them, which I'm gonna show you in a second. What they do is they form a new one and then they pinch and they sort of pull away. So look at this one right here. See, they're kind of getting a little bit further and then on the top, he's creating, um, he's gonna, what I call pinching. So he's gonna separate. That will become one on the right and that's gonna become one on the left. Maybe I can find another one that's really, really close to separating. So it's a little bit different than other corals that will grow or drop babies. You know, different mushrooms like Discosoma will just create new little baby ones that pop up um, right next to it. These ones are more close to like, I guess what an, uh, an enemy would do. They just, they split. Now these things like really low light. You cannot light starve a Recordia. I found some um, while out in the waters in the Caribbean before on the underside of rocks. Like this has probably one of the lowest par levels where you can find it and it's still gonna be happy. They also appreciate dirty water. Now, I'm not saying if you want to keep these and grow them, go and muck up your water, but if you have high nitrates, high phosphates, they are going to love that. They're going to be like pigs in a pile of poop. They will not mind that at all. Okay, we're going to do some spot feeding here. This is March's super secret coral sauce. Uh, I really designed it um, specifically for record uh, recordia. I mean zoanthids, but it works really well with these. Any soft coral really with the mouth is not going to be too picky. There's a lot going on in that food. You want to tell the camera where you found a bunch of these? Where were you? Jamaica? Yeah, tell us. <laughs> I like the thumbs up. No, tell, tell me that story again about where you found them and how there were thousands. And... Oh, there was more on the north coast. Close to Portland in Jamaica. Yes. And they were just snorkeling. And there was like a rock around uh, five feet tall. Mm -hmm. Around five, yeah, five feet tall. But then it was like around like, 15 foot deep water. And there was just recordings all underneath the underside and probably around 2,000 recordings. We have to go and find that spot and go harvest some of them. Just a little bit. This food sinks really nicely, so I'm gonna feed. Bunch of them in here. 
I'm gonna give him a chance to digest that. And I'm gonna show you a nice Recordia garden that we have in another tank here in the shop. Florida Recordia make a great choice for large tanks, medium tanks, or small tanks. Dylan is in the corner giving me poop because they're not called Florida Recordia, they're called, sorry, Recordia Florida, I've been corrected. This is our six gallon Pico here in the shop. And you can see I've gone a little crazy with the Recordias. They're not gonna hurt each other. Um, I even have a Yuma up next to some of them here. I've picked a bunch of colors that I like. And this tank, they're just doing awesome. They make a great choice for a smaller tank. Picos, Nanos, like this little fishy over here. And they, one thing to note, they will hurt other corals. So if I put these Recordias up against, so let's say these Acans, they're most likely gonna sting the Acans. But uh, among mushrooms, they're usually gonna be fine. And I'm even thinking about adding them here. So if you have a part in your tank where you're not getting light, so you see here underneath this cave kind of section, the overhang, it's all shaded. That would make a really good spot for Recordia because like they keep saying, they really do not need a lot, a lot of light. Actually, they don't like light. If I were to put one up here on top, I would bleach it very quickly. I think that's what uh, what this one is experiencing right here. See how the color is kind of light? We want to see deep, rich color like the orange on the back there or this green one. That's not really the best, best sign there, but with some spot feeding, I can expect him to come back pretty soon. Price, man, these things can get really expensive if you're overseas. I've seen them on parts of Asia, like Australia. I guess it's not in Asia, but um, anywhere that isn't close to the Caribbean, they can go for a couple hundred dollars each. So the price is really influenced about uh, where you live and how easy they are to get. So on our end, they're about $50 right now each by the t um, at the time of making this video. But the closer you get to Florida, they can get really inexpensive depending on um, the source.